All right, everybody, how y'all doing today? Good. All right, we are here to talk about writing, which is one of my favorite topics. So um, we have a few brave souls here in the front. I have a tendency to run on, and I've had a lot of coffee. So if y'all find that I'm just talking in circles, just give me a little signal, OK? <laughs> All right. So the name of this talk is Put Your Best Copy Forward, Winning the Internet with Your Words. Um, I'll just start with a little bit about myself to prove that I am, you know, maybe a little qualified to talk about this. Not, not super qualified, but somewhat. Um, I started my career in publishing back when publishing was still a big thing um, before the internet made everything free and accessible, which is awesome. Um, <clears throat> so I had to transition careers and I went to marketing. It made sense. Marketing communications is a lot of writing. Um, I've been doing marketing communications, creating marketing campaigns, basically s storytelling for companies for the last 12 years or so. Um, I am currently the senior customer lifecycle manager at Bluehost, where what that means is I just ensure a good customer experience by creating campaigns to guide customers through our products um, and offer them things in addition to their hosting that might be of use to that particular customer based on what their needs are. Um, my hobbies include poetry slams, coffee consumption, and correcting people's grammar. Um, no, I'm just kidding. I'm not obnoxious like that. I just silently judge you. Uh, <clears throat> and I put a picture here to reflect one of my hobbies, and there's a reason for that. I actually dance in hula hoops. And the reason I am telling you that is because what better example as we move through how to write content than for me to give you examples of writing to people about hoop dance. Um, I was going to bring a hula hoop, but I had a couple of very long flights. I'm sorry. Hit me up at another word camp and you'll get a full performance. <laughs> so just because I'm a type A personality, I like to know what's coming my way before we get started. Um, it won't hurt my feelings if this is not for you, but um, hopefully it is because I think communication is key to any business or any hobby or anything that you want to put out there in the world. Um, so the way it's going to work is we're going to talk about taking an idea and in a very methodic way, putting it into words. Um, this is a process with a few steps, so I'm gonna guide you through those. Um, and then we're gonna talk about actually putting all your research, everything you wanna convey into actual words that make sense. Um, sounds pretty basic, I know, but um, it can be, uh, a bit of work at times. So then um, we're going to do what I like to call slapping some polish on it. Uh, we're going to revise. We're going to look at how you can change words to maybe make them more effective. And then we'll talk about optimization very briefly. So let's get started. Yeah, that's a pretty much what I look like every time I have a new writing assignment. Um, I'm not trying to scare you off, I just take this very seriously, and um, I'm hoping to lift the veil on some of those frustrations for you as well. So hopefully with, you know, a method and a process, it'll just be easy peasy. So I want to start, I don't know how many of you uh, know what a positioning document is, but in marketing, this is our lifeblood, this is our blueprint, this is our everything. Um, I do not ever start any sort of writing project until I have this document completed. This is what's gonna guide everything you write and it's gonna help you to make sure that you're conveying the proper messages to the right people in the right way. So what I'm gonna do now is walk through the different elements of this positioning doc and kind of explain to you how to fill it out. So the first thing you need to do when you have any sort of website project where it involves copywriting, is to define what exactly your website is for, right? Are you selling a product? Are you trying to build a community around a shared interest? Are you trying to provide people with information for free? Um, are you creating a portfolio to promote yourself, right? These are questions on this slide that you need to have clear answers for, and I would assume that if you're undertaking the task of creating a full website, you have some idea about all these, so this is not a tough one. I promise you that. You can get to your answers on this pretty quickly. So, what is my website offering? What are the features of my offering? 
what are the capabilities? What are the factual things about my product that I can list out in maybe bullet form or in a paragraph if you're more comfortable with that? Um, something you can refer back to. What are the benefits of my offering? Um, there is a difference between features and benefits, which I'll get to shortly, but how does my offer benefit other people? What sets my offering apart? So what's my key differentiator? What's the thing? There's, I don't know if there's anything new that you can offer that hasn't already been offered out there, but the way you offer it, that's going to make all the difference. How, so how do you position what you're offering to the world in a way that nobody else has done? What makes it special? And is my offering commonly understood? So to this point, I just, uh, I'll get more into this a little later when we talk about audience, but um, I just wanna make sure that you're giving your specific audience the right kind of information. You're starting at the right place. Um, I'll dive into that in a second. That's kind of a segue into um, what's coming up next. But first, step two, answer this question. What do I want to accomplish with my website? Revenue? Do I want to promote my business? Do I want to have a portfolio? Do I want to share ideas or create a community? It could be all of these, it could be none of these. It could be something totally different that you're trying to accomplish with your website, but you need to set a very specific goal with your website, because that is going to help you define how you write the copy for it. So now we're gonna get to audience, right? You've determined the point of your website, what you're gonna be offering on your website, um, what its features are, and uh, what the key differentiators are. So now, you've really got to focus on the audience. This is a key step in communicating what you want to to your audience in the right way. So how does, who is my audience? I mean, you can, this is a step that you can take as deep as you want to. You can create personas, which means you could factor in everything about your key audience target that you want to, including, you know, do they have a commute to work? Do they work from home? Do they have families? Do they have, you know, partners, children, dogs. You can get as deep as you want, or you could just start at the top and say, my audience is a basic consumer who's in the market for X, Y, and Z. Or my audience is someone who shares the hobby that I have. We'll say hoop dance, right? They like hula hoops. They like to dance in hula hoops. That's who I'm going after. How does my offering benefit them? So, like I said, I'll talk more about that in a minute, but think about, think in terms of how your offering will make your audience's life better or richer or more productive. What is the overall benefit to them? Because that is your sweet spot. That's where you're gonna really hit in when you start writing. Um, what goal does my audience have? Are you helping them reach a goal? Or are you, and, and, and I'll be clear, every audience has a goal. When you're determining an audience, even if it's, you know, you're writing a blog, a personal blog, a creative writing blog, or a memoir, you have a specific audience and that audience has a goal. Maybe that goal is just to be entertained for a few minutes. Maybe that goal is to learn something about the human condition through your creative writing. Every audience has a goal, so you need to determine who you're reaching out to and what their ultimate goal is. And then lastly, what is my audience baseline knowledge of what I'm presenting on my website? Um, this is something I believe, um, I'm being a bit repetitive here because it is so important. Um, you need to understand who your audience is and how much they know. So for instance, if you're selling t-shirts, I would assume that you don't need to have an introduction explaining what a t-shirt is to them, right? I hope, I don't know. Um, but if you're in the textile industry and you're making fabrics uh, for t-shirts, but you're talking to the same audience, they might not understand the importance of your methods for creating poly cotton blends, right? So if you're trying to sell them on your specific fabric that, that you create, you might need to give them a little, a little more info about this is why my fabrics are so special. Make sense? All right. Okay. 
So here's a side note on features versus benefits. These are two different things. Some people use them interchangeably. I do not. Um, a feature is a factual statement on what your offer is. And a benefit is basically the answer to the question, what's in it for me, when your audience asks you that, OK? So a feature provides a benefit to your audience. Just want to be clear on that. I'm sorry if that's very basic, but I've run into that sometimes where, where people interchange them. OK, so now we're getting to it. So that positioning doc um, I showed you at the beginning, by this point, you should have filled out the purpose of your website, uh, what the features of your website are, who the audience for your website is, and what the benefits are to them. So now we get into the value prop. This is an overall statement. Um, if you've never heard what a value proposition is, this is an overall statement of purpose and um, a short, short, one to two sentence summary of what it is you're offering, who you're offering it to, and how it benefits them. Think of it as your elevator pitch, right? You're on an elevator, you have 15 seconds with someone, they ask you, oh, so what do you do? You've got a few seconds to succinctly explain to them what you do. That's what this is. So here's the super simple formula to do that. And considering that you've already answered a bunch of questions before you've reached this point, you should be able to fill this out no problem. You have all the information there already. What does my website offer? Oh, God. <laughs> What does my website offer? Who is my target audience? How does my offer benefit that audience? I know this is all very repetitive, but I really want to sink it in that these are the important points you have, to, you have to follow. And I've created just a little one about my hooping company, just to give you an example of how you would fill in that formula. So, all right. So now we get into the website journey. So you may be at a point where you've already laid out a website in the way you want it to be. That's great. Um, you may be just at the beginning, kind of collecting your ideas on how to create a website. That's great, too. There's no wrong place to start writing copy or to even just start thinking about the copy you're going to write on there. So you want to answer these questions. What are the possible ways that a visitor, visitor will go from home page to completed action? So if you have a lot of pages on your website, there are infinite number of journeys that um, a visitor or a customer or audience member will take, right? Um, when you think about the goal of your website, is there a single goal? Do you have a single action that you want someone to take on your website? Or are there 20 different actions they could take? Are you selling products? Do you have one product that you're attempting to sell? Or do you have 20 products? If you have 20 products, you're going to have a significantly longer journey for a potential customer or visitor when they, when they pop into your homepage, right? Um, they might go look at 10 different products first before they pick something. Um, I'm sure you all get this. I'll, I'll just kind of speed up through this section. But um, So um, are you presenting clear and intended options for your visitors? Um, we'll talk about wireframes in a second, but be thinking about this at the get-go, right? Um, how am I going to have my, my visitors move through my website? Have a plan in place. And um, a few other questions, um, you know, is it a universal well-understood need, or will your customer need extended information before they actually take an action on your site? So that means basically when they come to your homepage, is your potential audience going to be people who need to research something like in depth before they move forward? Or is this just a one and done like, oh, yes, I confirm that I've gotten to the place I need to be. Let me just click right through and complete that action. So I've put together a few just example uh, journeys that you can look at. Um, just focus on the top five or so. You don't want to have like, you know, 11 billion journeys listed there. You'll drive yourself insane. So just focus on, you know, the most efficient, main kind of journeys that, that will yield the best results in the shortest amount of time, right? And as you, as you go along, you can create more and more and, and figure out, uh, you know, which one works the best for your audience. But just some, just some uh, focus to get started. <clears throat> so 
Now we're actually moving into the writing part. Um, so yeah, I, I just realized that uh, the, the images that I'm using in this deck like make writing look completely agonizing, and I'm sorry. <laughs> it can be, but what I'm trying to do here today is to make it not agonizing, to make it very methodical and pragmatic and, and give you the, that process to get it done without pulling your hair out. So. So now's the time to start getting the pen out. I've just got a few little things before we start. And I'm saying that figuratively. I don't expect y'all to like complete an exercise and that this isn't, you know, a course for a grade or anything. Um, so before you start, consider this. Meet your audience where they are. Uh, we've kind of talked about this a little. Um, just start in a place of common knowledge. Start where the average person uh, where their knowledge level is. Um, if you're in a, a niche market, you're gonna wanna maybe, in your key audience demographic has extended knowledge of a very technical thing, then meet them where they are. You're always wanting to write for your intended audience. Cannot stress that enough. Keep it correct, guys. Um, this requires proofreading. This requires you know grammar to be proper. Um, have you ever gone on a website? And you think, oh, this is exactly what I'm looking for. And then you start reading the copy, and it's riddled with typos. Yeah, I, I, I get out of there as quickly as possible. I'm like, this is not legit. Um, same thing with email, by the way. <clears throat> be authentic. Um, I know this is a buzzword right now. Authentic, be authentic. I feel like it's you know one of those like online memes where it's got like a picture of a beach or a cliff. And be your authentic you, yeah. Um, I'm not trying to be inspirational here, I'm just trying to drive home the point that sometimes we get lost in trying to create really good copy, and in doing so, we kind of lose our personality, who we are, or the personality we're trying to convey in our website. I want you to keep that in mind, and that's why I stress, just start writing. We're gonna talk about revising and editing, but for now, just get your ideas down on paper, on tablet, on laptop, wherever you prefer to write. I prefer pen and paper because I'm like 100 years old, but it, it helps to just get it out there and then worry about style, right? So don't worry about style yet. We will get to that. All right. One more note. The missing content leak, the navigation bar. I don't need to explain what a navigation bar is, but what I will explain is how it is useful when you are writing copy. People get very set on telling specific amounts of information. I need my audience to know X, Y, and Z, and I need them to know it quickly. But they run into the mistake of putting everything out there on the first page, right? You have a home page, and it is just like your full life story, your family's life story, your business's life story. It's way too much information, and people are in a hurry. They want to confirm quickly that they have reached the right place and they want to be told which action to take. Don't worry about being pushy. They need to be told where to go. Otherwise, they're gonna get confused and frustrated and leave, right? So your nav bar is gonna help you determine what content you need based on what your options are. You're gonna categorize everything onto different pages through that nav bar. What content you need, where you need to put it, and how your visitors can access it. So think hard about how you're gonna categorize all the information you want on your website. Again, refer to your positioning doc. You've got your overall goal, you've got your, your value proposition, right? You've got all the answers you need to build the perfect website for what your purpose is. Um, so I'm not gonna harp too much on that, but basically just understand it gives the audience kind of a table of contents, a way to navigate through. All right. Um, so here's just a few notes on the nav bar. I just pulled one that I really like on a business that I use. Um, the main goal of this website is to create revenue. There's also goals of creating community. There's also goals of uh, getting people to go to live events or conferences. Um, but the main goal is revenue. And so they have highlighted their main CTA. This is ultimately what I want you to do when you visit my website. 
but I also have other options for people who maybe don't want to buy anything, who maybe just want a sense of community, or who want to learn more about my specific products. And the specific products are laid out there. Um, one thing I would note is this is a niche market for this website's from, so um, be cautious when you talk about your products. If you have products like hers, the names might not be clear unless you're already embedded in that community. So you might want to put categorical product names instead of specific product names so people can navigate quickly to what they need. Okay, now we get to the wireframe. So this is where I create the overall view of a page that I want to write on. Um, you can do this for your home page, you can do this for product pages, any page, right? So we're just going to go through a home page for now because uh, it's quick and easy. Quick and easy. So <clears throat> I've got a place for a headline, a subhead, and a CTA right at the top, above the fold. Um, that is my most important message because I have that one goal, that overall goal. I want people to drive straight toward it. Um, then I might put something kind of like my value prop underneath it. So when people see this, they say, okay, this is where I am. This is the action I need to take. And then here's a little more information about my website just to support you hitting that main CTA that I want you to hit. And everything is very visible, easy, boom. And then I add, you know, below the fold, I'll add a few other benefits if people want to like look into to more stuff, right? They want to, eh, I'm not ready to take that action yet, but I want to learn more, so I'm just going to scroll down and see what else you got to offer. Um, but this is where your writing starts. Uh, and so I've done a little exercise here for y'all, so y'all can kind of see what I'm talking about. I've put a nav bar. I've, cre I've decided how I want my website to flow. Um, I just made a, this is a no frills draft. This is a just get it down what you want it to say. Um, it, it's, it, I wouldn't use this as my, you know, final headline, but it's just something that says, hey, this is where you are and this is what we offer. Here's a clear CTA. Here's a little more information about my website. Oh, and then I've got these additional features and benefits that you might want to look at. Notice that I'm writing more on the benefit side than the feature side because I want to impact the audience. I want it to be about them. More on that in a second. So you get a page, you write a wireframe, you've, you've got this down and dirty draft. Before you move on to revising that draft, you should ask yourself the following questions. Does the copy confirm the visitor has reached their intended destination? Is there a way when that page pops up, they know they're in the right place? Have you confirmed that with your copy or with your layout and design? Does the copy clearly define the ultimate action the vis visitor is expected to take? Is there a way for them to move forward? Ha have you clearly stated a way, hey you, this is what you do next? Does it provide clear direction to further information? Is there another option besides, hey, you have to complete this action now? Is there a, oh, do, do you want to learn a little more before you move on? I don't want to be too pushy, you know. Um, does, it, does it tell your website story in logical order? Um, remember we talked about meeting the audience where they are. Uh, start at the top, too. Don't, don't make it too confusing. Don't give them, well, there's this information here, but then I want to tell you about this, but back to this, and then, oh yeah, do you remember that we talked about that? Yeah, so just keep it linear. And that's, I, I find it's easier to keep it linear whenever you have a wireframe and you can kind of place where you want the copy to go. Um, and above all, does it speak to the audience about the audience? Is it confirming their need? Is it confirming their overall goal? So ask yourself about these questions, you know, before you move on. But um, we're about to get into revision. But um, before we do, um, I have one more thing. And to reference one of marketing's most well-known pieces of copywriting. But wait, there's more. One more thing to do <laughs> before you can check it off and say, I'm good to go. Slap some polish on it. So here's what you want to do when, you, when we talk about revising your content. Um, go out and you've got this draft. It, it, may, be, it may not be pretty. Um, it may not be ready to go. But at least you've got your ideas organized. So go out and find websites out there that you like. 
It doesn't have to be in the same industry as you. It could be anything. I know we're all consumers in this room, right? I know a lot of websites I can think of right now that I've drawn inspiration from. Um, and they have close to nothing to do with what I do for a living or, or the websites that I create. So, and once you find websites you like, that's not really enough. You need to understand why you like it. Do they infuse a lot of humor in it? Is it more traditional and dry and business oriented? And you like that, nothing wrong with that. Is, do they use a lot of stuff like puns and tricks of words? So these are all things you need to understand why it is you like them, and then you can put those into practice on your w own websites. Um, I am not telling you to copy directly from other websites. I just wanna make that clear. I, I would say use practices that other websites use. So if they use metaphors to explain something technical, maybe look at your own and your own website copy and figure out a metaphor that would make sense to explain something technical in your own website, right? Use a pun now and then. I'm a sucker for puns. I went to a restaurant last night called Vladimir Poutine. <laughs> That's a good pun. That was enough to get me to a restaurant. Wasn't the highest rated poutine place on the map, but I went there because of the name. <laughs> Love a pun. <laughs> All right. And then once you infuse whatever it is you want to infuse into your copy, whether it's to make it you know, very professional and straight laced, uh, to make it really funny, um, LOL, make your audience LOL. Um, whatever it is you're doing, you wanna check back with your positioning document and really make sure that it resonates with the audience that you are targeting. You know, there's certain audience, and I struggle with it, I always like a little humor in anything I do, I think it's the spice of life. And there are certain audiences that I've written for in the past, usually in a business to business uh, situation, that are very straight laced. Um, I'm originally from Houston, a lot of oil and gas people there, very straight laced folks. Uh, they don't appreciate the humor so much, I found out. So I really need to check in with my audience because this is all about the audience. Have I said that, what, seven, eight times yet? Um, proofread, proofread. I don't think I need to explain that one and get feedback. Uh, your friends, your online communities that you're a part of already, um, that dude sitting next to you. Like, anybody's feedback is gonna be valuable feedback. Yes, it's gr great to get feedback from people who fit your audience segment, but anybody overall is gonna give you feedback on what you're doing. It's always great to have another set of eyes on it. All right, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start talking fast, guys. Um, I'm running out of time here. Okay, and then here's just a few tips for writing effective copy that I've used over the years. Every marketer, or almost every marketer knows these tricks. Well, I shouldn't call them tricks, I'll call them tips. Um, connect with your audience on an emotional level. Uh, you are gonna have a more efficient communication with your audience if you can talk to them, on the, connect with them as humans on the emotional side. Get an emotional reaction from them. Instead of telling them, oh, my solution's gonna do this or that for you, tell them, no, my solution, or, well, you wanna make it more about them, say, this will allow you more free time. It's gonna free up your time so you can spend time with your family and making those wonderful life memories. Really just dig into who they are as a person. Um, don't write with the eye in mind. We've talked about this a little bit. Write, about, write for them. You're writing, this is, instead of saying, I'm gonna do something that's gonna be so great for you, say, you are gonna have this. You are gonna get this. Really, you can go sentence by sentence and flip the script um, on your draft and, and really make it more about the audience. Use words that mean something. This is a sticking point for me, and not all marketers agree with this one, but I'm gonna take a firm stance right here in Montreal and say, use words that have a measure. Don't say, my solution is great. My solution is awesome. My solution is powerful. Do not, just don't. <laughs> just stick to things that can be measured and that are gonna be impactful. You only have a few words to say things uh, to get your message across, so use them wisely. And you tell I'm really passionate about that one. Um, and avoid the passive voice. It's weak. It doesn't, it doesn't reflect on you well when 
things happen to you or happen to your audience rather than your audience getting something, your audience obtaining something. It's a power stance, right? Okay, I'm gonna speed it up a little. Here's a few of my favorite tricks. Uh, alliteration, words that start with the same letter. Hello hooping, hello hula hooping. Appetag, you know, just words that have the same sound at the beginning, obviously. It makes it more memorable. It sticks in your brain quicker. Uh, rhythm, keep it snappy. Avoid these run-on sentences. If you have more than two commas in a sentence, you're doing it wrong. It, you've got to keep the rhythm and the pace going. You don't want to lull your readers to sleep. You want them moving forward, taking action. That usually requires shorter sentences, declarative sentences. Um, and pay attention you know, to, the, to the amount of syllables in a word. Um, avoid repetition. Don't start every sentence with the same word. Don't use the same word to describe what you're talking about. Um, I gotta quit moving away from the computer here. All right, metaphors and analogies. We kind of went over this a little bit. It's a great way to convey a technical idea or even a non-technical idea in a way that people can instantly relate to, right? Sunshine in a cup for orange juice, you know, stuff like that. Um, one of my favorite terms of all times, it's called kill your darlings. When you start writing, you're gonna, you're gonna write these sentences that you think are complete and absolute masterpieces, right? You say, God, this is the best sentence I've ever written. But you know what? It doesn't fit. And you gotta kill them. You gotta kill them. It's not about you know, winning literary prizes here. It's about conveying your message in the most efficient and impactful way possible. Um, and then, grudgingly, I will say, if all else fails, break out the thesaurus. I know I said in my talk summary to put that thesaurus down, but sometimes you get stuck, and I will, I will definitely uh, yield to that one. But when we talk about being authentic and authenticity, you really don't want to lean too heavily on a thesaurus. You want the words to come from you. You want it to sound uh, like you know what you're talking about. And if you're just re searching and replacing words throughout, you're going to lose the overall meaning and tone that you're, that you're looking for. Um, and I'm putting here a few references for killer content that I love. One second, please. Oh, wow, doing a lot of talking. I know. Um, I'm taking it old school with the elements of style. This is something I've read since I was a kid, and it really developed my love of writing and literature. Um, it's a short little book that has some great pointers for effective copy. Um, it's for all kinds of copy. It's not limited to marketing copy or website copy, but it is a great tool that I found. Um, AP Style Guide for checking your grammar, making sure you're writing in the correct way, your commas, you, you know, do I use double quotes or single quotes? Um, do I end with a preposition, is that okay? No, it's not, by the way. Um, Grammarly.com is a good uh, Chrome tool that you can use, you can feed your copy into it, and it'll come back and it, it covers a lot of grammar, um, even the passive voice, it will call you out on that. And then, Finally, uh, a really good resource is the Content Marketing Institute if you're writing for marketing purposes, which if you're creating a website that you want to gain traffic to, you are writing for marketing purposes. Um, so Content Marketing Institute is a great organization that provides free content on writing for marketing. Uh, they have live events. Uh, they have printed books. They have all kinds of great stuff. I would definitely recommend checking out their website. Okay. So you've polished up your content. Here we are. We're moving into the home stretch. Y'all still with me? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes, thank you. <laughs> All right, so what do you do once you have some polished content and you're ready to upload it to your website? You can upload it to your website, but you ain't done. You've got to optimize now. So you've got something you're happy with? Run with it, right? So I'm going to go through these really briefly because this is not really the purpose of this talk. Um, I know everybody loves SEO and I know everybody's ready to pounce on that, but that's, that's not what we're talking about here. I just wanna make mention of it because I would be remiss not to. When you're writing copy, um, after you get through that draft, you know, the one where you just get all your ideas down and it's ugly and messy and you gotta revise it. Once you start revising at that point, you need to start writing with SEO in mind. Um, you know, the way logic works with Google and other search engines is it's more than just keywords, it's phrases, throughout your copy. So you wanna make sure you're hitting that. 
Um, but again, I would, I would, you know, really recommend not worrying about that until that first draft is out. Um, do some keyword research. See what your competitors are doing. Um, see where they're ranking, and then look at the content that they have on their website. This is a great way to add and to optimize your own content. Um, and as you, something, something interesting happens when you start researching SEO. It, it, it kind of starts to shape what kind of new content you might put on your website. You might create a blog based on the SEO research that you've completed and see that, well, that would be a really good way to bump up my ranking. Or, um, you know, you might put some alternate content in there, and I'll get to alternate content in a second, but there's a lot that can happen as you start re researching SEO, and I really recommend that you, you know, look at some online tutorials. There's a lot of great information. Uh, WordCamps, specifically, have some really great sessions on SEO that you should definitely check out. Um, but one final thing before <clears throat> we finish up here. A-B testing, this is one of my favorite things in the world. Why is that? Because in the past, it's been really difficult to quant quantify or to qualify the success of content in copywriting. Basically, there is a way to measure how successful your words are, what order you put them in, how you construct your sentences, and it's called A-B testing. So A-B testing has taken two versions of something whether it's a sentence, even a word, how the words are arranged, are they in bullet form or in paragraph form, taking one variable, two different versions, and splitting them up on viewership. So visitors to your website, 50% of them are gonna see one version, and 50% of them are gonna see another version. There are a lot of online tools available for this. Um, I am at the enterprise level in my job, so I've only worked with enterprise level tools like Evergage and Monetate, but uh, do your due diligence, do your research. There are ways to implement A-B testing on your website. So, in my final conversation about hoop dance, I will go over a few examples of what I've done. Oh no. Well, unfortunately, something happened in formatting when I downloaded this to PowerPoint. So we're just gonna skip over that one, but basically the, the gist of it was that I created two different headlines. One was, you know, custom hoops for you. And then I thought, well, maybe some people don't understand why you would buy a hula hoop that is custom made and not just go to the toy store and get one. So I created a second banner that said, why hoop? And the CTA was to click through to learn more. Now, um, this test is a little clearer because apparently the pictures came out right. Um, so I tested CTA buttons to see what resonated with people more. I tried shop now and find your hoop. Um, some people come to your website with the, with the notion of, I just want to research and find out more about this. So shop now might have been too powerful for them. Um, so I tried find your hoop. It's a little more casual. It doesn't have the same commitment that shopping does. Um, and then what I would do was present it to 50% of uh, my audience along, and then the other one to the other 50%. And then I would track click-throughs and see which CTA got the most click-throughs. Um, you can look at percentages and say, okay, well, 100 people click this one, and there were 200 visitors. And then on this one, there were 200 visitors, and only 20 people clicked it. So you. A lot of times you can find a clear winner, and then I would say, go with that. And then you can continue to tweak as well, right? You can continue to optimize and do new tests and that kind of thing. Um, and then you're really, you're really quantifying the success of your content that way. And then, we're almost done, guys. We're almost done. All right. And then um, a last note about the content is uh, try supplemental content. You can't always say everything you want to say with words and expect people to read it all. Um, use your words sparingly, yes, but be sure you, to use them wisely to, to fill up the page in a way that works. And you can supplement that with any number of different content. Um, video is a great way. Some people learn by watching videos better than they do by reading. Uh, you know, there's images you could include, diagrams. Diagrams are a great way of showing the value of your features. Um, and then 
My personal favorite, ratings and testimonials. We talked about hitting your audience on an emotional level. One of the best ways to do that is to get other audience members to tell their stories about how what you're offering benefits them. This is hugely impactful in any industry I've ever been in. I have seen this directly relate to uh, completed actions of an audience. It really it, it hits a lot of audience members at home because these are people just like them who are benefiting in the way that they want to benefit. And then educational content. You know, we talked about when you're researching SEO, you might find out that you want to create some copy around some other things um, to improve your, your search rankings. Um, this is where educational content comes in. And um, just to wrap up, um, remember to review your docs regularly. Uh, look at your website journeys you might add to it. Check your features. These could change over time. The features of what you're offering may change if your product is changing or your offering is changing, whatever that may be. Same with your benefits. New benefits might present themselves to you once you get feedback from customers, right? And keep up the copy. It's, it's always going to be changing. Your copy is always going to be transforming as you go along. And as you do testing and SEO and all that fun stuff, it's really going to affect your copy. And lastly, track everything. Put some numbers behind it. Make sure you are staying on top of your website through the copy and what you are saying to your audience. Woo, all right guys, well that's all I got. Do I have any questions?